at midnight, mm -hmm. Br Union Jack yes, of know. Britain went down mm -hmm. and the Barbados Trident flag went mm -hmm. up and uh, Errol Barrow was there with the British, last British governor. Mm -hmm. uh, that was um, Sir John Stowe. Okay. And you have this famous picture mm -hmm. of John Stowe holding up Barrow's hand. Oh, as yes, yes. So we're here with Lennox Honeychurch, a cultural activist, a man of many titles mm -hmm. and so much wisdom, mm -hmm. I have to say. We met at the Barbados Rum Experience just gone in November and the information you served was, has blown my mind. So introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who really is Lennox Honeychurch. Fine. Well, I am a, born in Dominica, so I'm a Dominican by birth, mm -hmm. but my father's family all came from Barbados. Mm -hmm. So I am a Bajan national by descent. And I went to the Lodge School here in St. John's in Barbados. And my family, very influential actually in me becoming what I am, mm -hmm. because my, um, my father's sister married Frank Collimore of the oh, Frank Collimore Hall. Yes. So while I was here going to school, of course, I was growing up with them and had the full experience of Barbadian knowledge and theatre mm -hmm. and, of course, friendships with people who were working in various fields of Barbadian culture. So uh, that anchored me pretty well in Barbados. Yeah. and. Um, I have also worked uh, briefly with the National Trust here and I've been associated with the Barbados Museum through the um, Museum Association of the Caribbean. Oh. So there are all these different links. You know? What is your biggest passion of all of them? Well, my passion, I am also an artist, so I like ah. to I paint. Um, and in fact, that is one of the reasons that I'm staying on in Barbados mm -hmm. because after Barbados became a republic, mm -hmm. at the State House, um, they changed a lot of the old paintings that were there before, oh. all the engravings and prints of former British royalty and all that. Mm -hmm. They have been changed and then they got Barbadian paintings mm -hmm. uh, to put up. And on Friday, uh, the president is inviting all those artists Lovely. whose paintings are on display to um, to visit and see the new setup mm -hmm. and also to talk about their paintings. Mm -hmm. And my, the painting that was chosen of mine to be there was one that I did um, reflecting or actually representing Independence Night in 1966 oh, when I was 13 years old and I was right there on the um, Savannah mm -hmm. and I couldn't see and there I climbed up in the trees overlooking the crowd and that image of the flag going up of the, uh, of the soldiers, the troops, the fireworks, the crowds. Mm -hmm. When it was the 50th anniversary of independence, I painted a picture of my memories oh, lovely. and apparently I gave it, I donated it to the museum, mm -hmm. but then when they were setting up the new paintings for the State House, mm -hmm. my painting was chosen. Um, so essentially that they've got the painting aspect, but then there's an in interest in the environment, mm -hmm. geography, um, people's in interaction uh, with the environment mm -hmm. over the hundreds of years. So, and I'm a, I do archaeology. Um, pre-Columbian mainly, okay. those persons who were in the Caribbean before Columbus. And uh, I, I work with ar archaeologists that come from major universities, both in Europe and in, in the United States, uh, wherever they are going to do studies, you know. So it's varied. Yes, so really. that's why I like maybe to put it in sort of a cultural aspect. Yes because the subject what I graduated with from Oxford University was anthropology. Ah. So anthropology in, includes all of this, cultural okay. anthropology, it includes art, uh -huh. it includes archaeology, right. it includes the interpretation of society, oh. all of that. Well, on the topic of the interpretation of society, that's right. give us a synopsis of life growing up in Barbados then and how you view it now. Okay, well, <clears throat> I um, began school here mm. uh, in 1963, but I had... Just before independence. Just before independence, yes. but I had visited so, quite often before mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
one of the first things that struck me, now remember I'm coming from Dominica, it's mountainous, it's green and all that kind of stuff. Um, and here I, I came into a Barbados that I knew my family was associated with and I was deeply part of, mm -hmm. but from a, a, a geographical point of view, it was so different. It's mm -hmm. flat, you know, the terraces going up and the cane fields. Now, when I was a boy, in the early 60s, the windmills, mm -hmm. that is for crushing cane, yes. had stopped. Uh -huh. But many of them, you could still see the um, the sails and the... Literally, oh, oh, like yes. the one in... Um, Morgan Lewis, yes, yes. Which is the only full standing one. That's the structure. only full standing one yeah. still. Um, so, uh, but then there was a lot of, the other thing was, um, as a child that I hadn't seen before, were all of these modern American uh, water wheels. They were mm. windmills mm -hmm. on all the plantations mm -hmm. and they had the metal um, uh, fan right. to get water from below the earth uh, to then put into tanks to service the plantations. And of ah. course, in those days, there were many more plantations right. than there are now. Yeah. And um, particularly when I was in the country up in St. John, the whole life and work of the plantation was going on around mm. us because the neighboring plantation was Society mm. for Codrington College. And then you had a Guinea plantation mm -hmm. and uh, all of those. So the whole life and the life had still, I was just able to catch, you know, the traditional way of cutting cane, mm -hmm. of putting them on carts, mm -hmm. of uh, going to, to the mill. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in my day, of course, it was mainly steam mills, you know, in places like um, Buckley and mm -hmm. uh, all these areas. So um, that was my growing up. And I was very fortunate because when I look back uh, from a historical point of view, I'm so glad that I caught that little yeah. last moment yes. of cane production mm -hmm. and all that, you know. And then being in the countryside, being up in St. John, um, at Lodge, I was a boarder. So they had boarding establishment, they had a hostel, right, we stayed yes. there. And then you had to go across to society for church. Mm -hmm. And then down to Codrington College, they had a big natural pool there of fresh water. And we used to practice there. And then on the way, of course, I would meet people who were in various in the villages. Um, I remember a woman at Palmer's and she, and we're talking about like 60s and she had a little, a very small chattel house mm -hmm. and she used to make for me cassava, cassava uh -huh. pony. Uh -huh. And she had a bed made entirely of couscous grass, really? you know, and she was very aged and she, probably when she died, the whole thing would change. Oh, and I think yes. they've demolished the house and so, but you know, it's the aspect of catching that culture yes, of, of, uh, before it completely went. Yeah, I can't imagine it being very comfortable though. No, although she, <laughs> she liked her couscous grass bitch. <laughs> Maybe if you are accustomed to something, you know. It's true, you don't know any about her That's properly. right, yes. Yeah. So um, all of these things were, were experiences that I had. And then of course, through my uncle Frank Collimore, mm -hmm. um, I, I learned so much. Mm -hmm. He's a poet, but an actor as well. And, um, you know, writer about Barbados. Mm -hmm. And and just down there in Chelsea Road mm -hmm. uh, was where he produced the BIM magazine, which was a, a, a magazine for Caribbean writers. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the great ones like uh, Derek Walcott and mm -hmm. Edgar Mittelholzer uh, and uh, John Figaro from Jamaica, uh, across the Caribbean. And they would send material and then he would sort it out. And so BIM magazine was a great product of Barbados. Mm -hmm. All of this was happening around me. And then what happened is all his friends and right. people he had taught because he was a, a teacher at Comba mm -hmm. and he had taught people like um, George Lamming. Wow. So George Lamming and all these people used to come and have drinks and chat and everything. And I, I just grew up with it as a boy. That's natural. Yeah. It's only when later in adult life mm -hmm. and these guys right. got wow. older or like George Lamming passed away mm -hmm. that I appreciated the experience, yeah. the luck of the experience yeah. that I had had. You kind know? of like me right now with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, through that, you know, I got a, a lot of uh, information mm -hmm. and it wasn't only creative writing. There were historians and others, you know. So that is uh, the sort of background link. And you see my uncle Collie, as we used to call him, Frank Collimore, mm -hmm. uh, he was born at the end of the previous century. Oh. 
Uh-huh. So we're talking about 1890s. Right. And as a little boy, on the afternoon, he would come up here at the garrison when there were still soldiers stationed. Wow. And they were all marching and playing polo and riding horses mm-hmm. and in the barracks here. So he remembered all of that. Then 1905, they left and they went away. Everything changed, but at least through his mind. Yes. And I can remember him driving down through, let's say, Worthing. Mm-hmm. And he'd tell me, oh, you know, Lennox, when I was a little boy, mm-hmm. all here was sea grapes. Really? Yeah, yeah. I... all the way from Accra going all the way down, you know, towards St. Lawrence and everything. Kind of like East Coast? Yeah, it was sea grapes. Mm-hmm. It was, mm-hmm. um, you know, you just walk through the, f- the bush and you got across a few little houses. Mm-hmm. But he saw all of this grow and then not to mention the bigger hotels mm-hmm. and all that, you know. So it was, oh, and the other thing that was very interesting was to me, was growing up, the careenage was full of schooners, sailing boats, right. carrying... I've seen photos of Yes, of yes. produce right. Active from area. all the other islands. Mm-hmm. And when you, and you know, there was no regimental that there is now to say that there's fences and gates and mm-hmm. so People just arrived and walked off and traded mm-hmm. for sweet potatoes and oranges and grapefruit and everything was going on, man. St. Lucians and Dominicans mm-hmm. getting off and speaking their patois. Mm-hmm. The Bajans there were coming to the ships to see what they could buy and mm-hmm. pottery, you know, from Chalky Mound mm-hmm. being um, sold right yeah. there on the dock, but mm-hmm. also they would have orders from the other islands. Mm-hmm. So some of the orders were being put on the schooners um, and then you had no deep water harbor in my first days mm-hmm. there. So a lot of the sugar was being loaded in bags mm-hmm. in huge, uh, uh, what they call lighters, that lighters, they were big boats and they okay. took the sugar out to the port right. um, to be loaded onto the big steam ships. Mm-hmm. And you can imagine those guys, those yeah. guys, the lighter men, yeah. had to be strong. They had to stood be. up with these huge oars mm-hmm. and they brought these massively loaded um, sugar uh, lighters mm-hmm. out into the port. My goodness. And then all the, all the produce, all the imported stuff, all the cargo, all the motor cars, that would come to Barbados had to be lowered into these boats in Carlisle Those Bay. Boats. Oh yeah, my goodness. and rowed to shore and wow. offloaded. So when the Deepwater Harbour came mm-hmm. in 1961, that was so important mm-hmm. for Barbados, you know, mm-hmm. and that changed everything. So and that changed because they took the the all the wonderful schooners and mm-hmm. colourful life out of the Carinage mm-hmm. and brought it to the shallow draft, yeah. and even that. Declined, now. so now it's the yachts and the yes. catamarans. It's a, it's a and, parking bay. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So life, life, life is is very different. Um, but you got the impression, and this is leading up to independence. You know, you got the feeling of aspiration and a new, a new, a new era mm-hmm. dawning and all. And when I was at uh, Lodge, uh, my history teacher mm-hmm. was uh, he became Sir Alexander. Hoyas, mm-hmm. uh, he was, we used to call him, our nickname was Fabi because he was F.A. Hoyas. Okay. So we call him <laughs> Fabi. Anyway, the week before, weeks before independence, um, we all had to learn, one, we had to learn a new national anthem yeah. because we were singing God Save the Queen mm-hmm. before, mm-hmm. and also the, the coat of arms mm-hmm. crest because we had the British coat of arms mm-hmm. before or the Barbados Colonial Coat of Arms. Yeah. You know? So I was chosen uh, at school to uh, describe, we had a, around the outside of the Memorial Hall at the lodge, mm-hmm. we had a panel and, and then he, a boy would put up one part of the Coat of Arms. Oh. So they'd bring in a, the, the dolphin right, yes. yeah, and the pelican. Yes, yes. And then as each came, I had a, Script. You had a list of uh, script, <laughs> and then I would describe what the pelican was, oh. and bearded fig tree, and the pride of Barbados, mm. and the motto, pride and industry. Yeah, like but luckily it. it was written for me. <laughs> but it was for the boys mm-hmm. to experience for the first mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And then the flag, and you know what was the meaning of the mm-hmm. flag. And one one thing I really admire about the Barbadian flag is that it has this wonderful little story mm-hmm. associated with it because on the old colonial uh, crest, there is Neptune, mm-hmm. who is 
you was usually the king yes, or queen of, of, the, of, of the yeah, yeah. but they were usually the king or queen of the British Empire. Really? Yeah, they were dressed to the crown and all that. Oh. So they were serving both purposes. I was yes. wondering how we got tied. I know we're and on the an island, but and then the 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 the, um, the central figure mm -hmm. is holding this very long trident, mm -hmm. and then in front you have these seahorses. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. That was how it was. So the front seahorse mm -hmm. from years, years back was taken and it's on the large crest, oh. large cool crest. Mm -hmm. But the designer of the flag did something very clever. Mm -hmm. He decided to say, okay, we broke, broke broken away. the trident yes, yes, and yes. we're putting now the trident. So yes. it has a, a continuation mm -hmm. and a story. Mm -hmm. So we had to learn all of that, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, of course the national anthem mm -hmm. had to sing it all over and over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> you know, in plenty and in time of need. Mm -hmm. So we got all of that and then we had a big long weekend to come down for independence. Mm -hmm. Luckily my aunt and uncle lived just across in the Chelsea Road. Yeah. So in the night now we came up, I mm -hmm. came up and I could not see. Um, I couldn't see over the crowds. I mean, oh, masses and yeah. masses of people. <laughs> they filled all of Bay Street. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no traffic down there at all. Steel bands and top bands and, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, I decided I'm going to climb up in the evergreen tree. I still see the evergreen tree over there. And I saw everything mm -hmm. clear. Midnight, the flag mm -hmm. and the fireworks. And, it's yeah, I, mean, I heard it, it rained. It was very rainy. It was very, <laughs> they even had to, within the afternoon, before they had to bring sand mm -hmm. and fill over the the park, mm -hmm. fill over the savannah, mm -hmm. where the people, the um, cadet corps and mm -hmm. the regiment and all were going to march. Yeah, yeah. So they had to do all of that because okay. it, um, to my memory, it did not rain around the actual time, ah, okay. but it was very soggy, mm -hmm. you know. Rain. Anyway, um, I was able to witness everything. I heard it was at midnight. Night was at it? midnight. Yes. At midnight, mm -hmm. the the flag, uh, the Union Jack yes, of know. Britain went down, mm -hmm. and the Barbados Trident flag went mm -hmm. up, and uh, Errol Barrow was there with the British last British governor mm -hmm. uh, that was um, Sir John Stowe okay. and you have this famous picture mm -hmm. of John Stowe holding up Barrow's hand. Oh as, yes yes I think yes. I've seen it but I don't know. Who so all of that I saw but in you know the distance yeah, yeah. distance. So years later mm -hmm. on the 50th anniversary um, I painted a picture of my memory mm -hmm. and today the, that picture is now hanging in State House. Awesome. So I'm very yeah, proud of yeah, that, yeah. you know. Because, um, you know, in those days you didn't have look, many colored pictures, oh, photos. Yes, well, so all the photos are in black and white mm -hmm. and you didn't get the feel mm -hmm. of, of all the fireworks and everything. But of course I was painting in mm -hmm. color. So.